Hey guys, so today we're doing a chit chat get ready with me. I'm gonna try to film two videos today and since I have to get ready for sure to do the other one, then I thought I'd film myself chit chatting and getting ready with you. I am not good at these videos typically. That's why I don't do them very much. I do like the more like relaxed um, vibe of them, but I am not good at doing my makeup and tell you what I'm using and tell you what I'm doing and then talking about other stuff. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna moisturize slash prime my skin using the SkinCeuticals Daily Moisture. This is a light lightweight pore minimizing moisturizer. I stopped buying and using like priming moisturizers. Hold on, let me apply this really quick. It's in my hair. I do this every time. I'm trying not to buy any more priming moisturizers um, a la the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Face Base or like the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. As some of you know, most of you know, I think the majority of us are aware. I'm trying to go on a no buy. It's been fairly successful. The only exceptions to this has been, as I initially said, um, I would buy things I ran out of. I haven't bought anything else except for skincare, which I did not say was gonna be part of it. I gotta start somewhere. I figured makeup be a good place. Don't take my skincare. Anyway, I'm gonna use a lot of the new Urban Decay brow product. I have like a really old brow routine video. I haven't updated it in like three years. It's been a long time. I don't do anything crazy different than in that initial video. I just take a brow powder and just kind of like roughly fill in the majority of the shape that I have. These are the brow blade um, brushes they came out, or not brushes, the pencils they came out with. These are amazing. I'm very concerned I'm gonna run out very quickly because it's double-ended and like how much pencil can really be fitting in here. One end is an actual pencil and the other end is a liner pen. It looks kind of like a felt tip liner. The great thing about this is you can get such lifelike hair strokes with it. I friggin love this. I'm surprised no one has come out with something like this before. It's replaced all my other brow products. Basically, this is my new absolute favorite. Um, after I put on my pencil, I'll just kind of go and just like roughly <laughs> fill in the rest. I told you I'm not good at this. Like, I feel like people who are good at chit chat get ready with me by now would be like balls deep in some kind of story time, but uh, I just suck at this. It's self-defeating, Whitney. You do not suck at this. You're just out of practice. I am out of practice because I haven't been doing, um, like real makeup videos lately. I feel like I've done a little bit. Nothing like I was kind of doing before. My last two videos were not makeup related at all. They were fun to do. I think I'm just still trying to navigate how I'm going to create makeup related content when I'm not buying new makeup. I don't even know what makeup is out. I went to Ulta the other day. I walked around Ulta for like an hour, just kind of looking at what was out and I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I genuinely thought maybe I was being a little bit cocky when I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a no buy and it's gonna be no big deal. Thought maybe I was getting a little ahead of myself, a little big for my britches. I wasn't tempted to buy anything, anything at all. I mean, I saw Too Faced has a new launch right now. I just feel like Too Faced collections lately, like don't even sort of interest me. Literally one of their most recent collections was called the Pretty Rich Collection. They sent me the whole thing. Uh. It, first of all, it wasn't anything to write home about in terms of products. Like, they weren't bad products, but they weren't good enough for me to feel like I needed to talk about them. But, like, pr why? I don't know. Like, is that something you guys get excited about? Like, rich people! I was at Ulta the other day, and their newest collection, or the one that was there when I was, is Erica Jane. I think she's a real housewife? I just don't know. Like, not my bag. I thought it was ridiculous. I'm trying to remember what other collections were out. Obviously, nothing stuck out to me because I genuinely only remember the Too Faced one and that was mostly because I kind of was like, but why though? I don't know, I feel like the beauty, I mean I've said it before, it's the whole reason I'm on a no buy to begin with. I feel like brands have just gotten so incredibly, so incredibly lazy and just are really counting on influencers and the social media machine to get their sales that they're mostly not trying. The only brand that consistently come out with stuff that I get super excited about are Hourglass, Charlotte Tilbury, and that's honestly it. That sounds so negative today. I'm sorry. Sometimes I just enjoy roasting brands and their products. I don't mean any harm, or maybe I do. It's to be expected, I think. If I'm at a point in my makeup journey where I just can literally get on YouTube and be like, I don't wanna buy makeup anymore, you have to expect that I'm a little disillusioned and just not here for it. So I do wanna touch on that, talk a little bit about what I've learned so far. It's been about three months, maybe longer, since I made my declaration, or even longer, I think, since I set my intention. For foundation, I'm gonna mix a few things. I'm gonna mix the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear, 
the Lancome Tint Adol and the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Just kind of all see what happens when I mix it together. It hasn't been difficult for me not to buy any new makeup or even feel tempted to. I honestly feel like the major thing that helped me with this thus far is I've unfollowed so many accounts that I felt like were triggering. I don't really want to use that word because I don't feel triggered by makeup accounts, but if you are on Instagram, even a portion of the amount of time that statistics suggest we are, and you're constantly being bombarded with messages of new, new, bye, bye, need, need, bye, bye, that's going to get up in your brain sauce. For me, I was tired of seeing it, just just sick of it. I didn't feel tempted, but I was also sick of seeing it. So I don't even know, as I said in the beginning, what's coming out. I have to actively go look for something if I want to know a new version of a product that I'm in the market for. And it's been amazing. Not to mention, I just flat out unfollowed, I don't know, I think I told you guys, at the time it was around 800, but I'm sure it's gone well over 1,000 now, of just accounts that I was bored with. and. This kind of like epic, heavy, double, triple cut crease, five layers of, of foundation with contour and color correcting and overdrawn lips and a streak of highlighter. Like I've been over that for a hot minute and I unfollowed every account that promotes that, like whether it's a share page or any artist that I just was just not inspired by. And I am following exclusively makeup artists that do something for me. I could make a whole video just on accounts I think you guys should follow. I think the makeup artists right now that are really killing it for me are the ones that are in Russia. There's a lot in Australia that I'm really into and their whole vibe is just like really fresh, glowy, youthful, just oh like I love it so much and I feel it's almost so contrary to what does really well on Instagram. I mean they're still doing very well from themselves don't don't get me wrong but it's not like what the kids are into. They're actually professional working makeup artists which is also a good place to start when it comes to following influencers for makeup inspiration I personally believe. I just feel like there's been this run in the Instagram world for a very long time of just so much. Like it's so much, it's so extra. And as a girl who's been extra pretty much her entire life, I defy you if you know me in real life to disagree with that statement. It's even getting to be a little much for me. Now that could have a lot to do with the fact that I'm getting older and I'm not trying to take anything away from you young bucks. I just love the kind of more like useful look. And even when it comes down to like plastic surgery and fillers, which listen, I have plastic surgery, I've had fillers, but I just feel like it's getting to that point now this is gonna sound so shady, I'm sorry. Where it's being overdone to the point that women are taking on a much, some women are taking on a much more masculine appearance as a result. For me, the amount of filler or injections or chemical peels or vampire facials or whatever I'm doing, which I think I'm pretty subtle about personally, I think so. Um, I'm also at an age where I feel like it's not the end of the world to start trying to, you know, age gracefully and just do a little nip, little tuck anyway. I do all that stuff because I want to re retain looking younger and for me now the main objective is like especially with the chemical peels I've been getting my goal with that is to get my skin to a place where I need to wear less makeup. I think what's happening is girls especially very young girls who already have volume and firmness and beautiful natural contours to their skin are getting a lot of in my opinion I'm sorry a lot of unnecessary work done and then applying a crap ton of very structured harsh makeup on top of it that's your look and that's what you want to do knock yourself out like I said I'm not no one died and made me the king of the zombies do you I used to actually get really offended many moons ago and this would have been like four years ago when people used to get on their high horse and really kind of talk crap about Instagram makeup because at the time like and even still that's something I do but even back then, I don't think it's nearly as extra, extra as it is now. I feel like now the look that these young girls are doing is, I feel like an old person getting up here, but I can't be the only one. I can't be. Cause like I said, the accounts that I'm referring to, they're not 5.5 million and two Morphe collabs, all that good stuff, but they're not doing bad for themselves at all. Can't be the only one who likes that makeup style. I just can't be. It's entirely possible that 
that you are watching me doing my makeup at home right now and you're like, girl, you already wear a lot of makeup. What are you saying about? But I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I've been noticing how much more inspired I feel and kind of like I said, my whole attitude towards makeup and like the reason I want to buy it and the types of products I want to buy has changed just simply from doing a social media purge and not exposing myself to a style of makeup that I don't like. Cause I'm telling you, I feel like it was last year, the end of last year, summertime especially, felt like, well, that's what the kids wanna see. They wanna see all of the things. I just felt like, why do people do this? Like, why? I'm just too old for that. Like, if I have three extra hours in my day to do something, let me tell you what, the last thing I want to do is blend eyeshadow. I just don't care enough. Most of the type of makeup, and maybe exclusively the type of makeup that I'm into now, isn't even focused around the eyes. It's the skin. Like, I am trying to figure out how to get that gorgeous, glowy, natural, but not overdone done skin, which is truly where makeup artistry to me comes to shine. I can't remember who said this, okay? I could be dead wrong. It could have been, I think it was either Plato or Socrates or Micro Michelangelo. It was somebody from back in the Dizze. Famously said, perfection is not achieved when there is nothing more to add. It is achieved when there is nothing more to take away. And that's how I feel about makeup artistry. Like true makeup artistry that actually does something for me. It's not about how much crap you can put on. It's how can you do the most effective, beautiful work that doesn't hide the woman? And I guarantee, like all trends, we will look back on this time and laugh. I mean, I look back on makeup that I thought looked good two years ago. Like two years ago, I was really into, no, not two years ago. I guess it'd be like three years ago. I was very into matte skin and monochromatic makeup. Like that to me was the gig. And do you guys guys remember when everybody was wearing that gray, gray, grayish, that's what it was called, a gray beige lip color which literally makes you look dead. Everybody was doing that. And now I would never wear that lip color. I would never wear matte skin and monochromatic looks not so much I was wearing a lot of red eyeshadow for a while there it does concern me like I said people to think that that kind of snatch to the gods 10 pounds of makeup all the plastic surgery that that's expected that's all there is and I came back to reality and changed the type of content that I consume and the type of Instagram accounts that I follow and I have a much more honed in I think realistic perception of what goes into looking like that and really how far I'm willing to go to look like what my ideal perception of beauty might be. A lot more toned down than what it was about a year ago. Am I a total hypocrite for commenting on this? Do you think there's a balance that needs to be struck? Have you yourself felt kind of in influenced to make changes to yourself? Maybe you wouldn't have once ever considered doing I will say one side effect of not spending money on makeup to the degree that I used to is it's made me want to really improve upon and learn new techniques. Which is why it kind of sucks that I can only do makeup on myself right now. I need to start doing makeup on other people again because it is so much more fun to try out new techniques on people that are not you because not every technique you want to try will suit you. My skin is oily combo and I definitely have larger pores right here and on my forehead and I hate them because like I don't want to wear powder. That is my new goal in this life is to figure out how to do my makeup. Wow, really? Your goal in life, Whitney? It's my goal in makeup to figure out how to do my makeup in such a way that I can wear little to no powder and my skin not run all over my face. Like I only have a little bit of powder underneath my eyes on my forehead and like my T-zone right now. My foundation seems like it's set so I feel like I can like move on with more products but I'm scared. When I used to get models and clients with just ridiculously good skin, poreless, no hyperpigmentation, nothing, just good to go and they would be like, oh can I just get like a lot of like full coverage? It was like hurt my feelings. I see a lot of YouTubers do that too. There's some YouTubers that have like beautiful skin and they're just like, I'm just a full coverage kind of girl and I don't understand it. I guess youth is wasted on the young. Isn't that what they say? Like, you just won't know how good you got it until you don't have it anymore. I think our perception of what is 
beautiful and what's normal is so different now than it was even a few years ago. There's not a whole lot I wouldn't do to have like flawless skin. I will probably never actually have it because I am just that kind of person who struggles with breakouts and very sensitive skin. And then every time I get a breakout, I get a scar, like a hyperpigmentation scar. So I would literally have to never break out again to have beautiful, flawless, clear skin. All right, so I am baking the center of my nose because I contour my nose. I will never stop doing that. I have to do it. I have like no powder on my face. This is a watershed moment in my makeup life. For blush, I'm gonna use Tarte Tipsy because like I said, I really want like sun. I'm just so ready for it to be warm. Usually what I do at this point is I would take a powder, like my ambient lighting powder, and I buff it all over my skin. Now, I'm already pretty dewy, like much more dewy than I'm used to being. So I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to be very particular about where I apply this, and I'm just going to apply it everywhere. I don't even know why I start off saying things. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel so pretty. I'm gonna do a little bit of MAC Red Lip Pencil, and I'm gonna do Morphe Hot Shot Liquid Lip, because if you know anything about me at all, you know that a red lip is just, that's my thing, I love it, okay? Any time of year, any color red, it's just my thing. All right guys, that is the end of this video. Some stuff might have been cut out in the process, but really today I just wanted to hang out with you guys and talk about some things I have been, you know, rolling around in the old dome piece and play with some new techniques I've been wanting to try. I cannot believe that I have almost no foundation, uh, foundation, I have foundation on, um, almost no powder on. Like literally, I don't know if you guys have ever watched my videos before, I usually have an under eye setting powder, I have a powder I set my entire face with, I bake, I use hourglass powders on top of that, I have almost none on. I think I've cracked the code, but you have to stay tuned and I will share with you how to have oily skin and use almost no powder. Now, once again, I haven't taken a step outside. We'll have to see what happens, but at least just for the sake of filming a video, I know I can do that now. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you are subscribed if you are not. Check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.